Hello gamers, Powered Heal here, and today we are coming at you with the new leaked Paladin runes. And basically, uh, just to hop right into things, we're going to be talking about uh, Paladin at level 40, and we're going to do a little bit about what spec you're probably going to be using, and uh, then we're going to go over the normal spells that you'll have access to, how those kind of factor into things. But mainly, we're going to be covering these, uh, these new runes that we've got our hands on here. And this is really kind of like what I've been waiting for before trying to release a, uh, a video for the level 40 bracket because, you know, if you don't have any of the rune information, the video is going to be very, very incomplete, right? And it's still probably going to be pretty incomplete because we don't really know if we're even going to be getting any of these, like, guaranteed. This is all data mine stuff, right? So it's just stuff that's in the game file, so they could have been um, runes that were... You know, they thought they were going to add, then they removed, or maybe they're even runes that come at a higher level. If you notice, um, there's quite a breadth of slots that we cover here, right? So that makes me a little bit skeptical of if we're actually going to get all of these or not. I'm kind of unsure, but we're going to kind of go through them as, uh, as if we will get all of them. And keep in mind that I feel like you probably will get all of them eventually. It's just a matter of, you know, are we going to get them at level 40? And of course, there's always the case where some of them, uh, you know, may have been discontinued or something like that. So definitely things we want to keep in mind as we move forward here. But I think that it, yeah, now that we have the runes uh, at least somewhat available to us, we can actually make a video and I can kind of give you guys some thoughts that aren't completely off base, right? Because we really just need information before we can do stuff like this. Otherwise, it's kind of just a waste of time. I mean, I can make sit here and make a video, phase two paladin, and give you the level 40 paladin talents, right? But that's not really going to be uh, super informative. So we try and wait for for what the data mine gods get us. <laughs> also, I guess uh, spoilers in this video, um, <laughs> although it's probably a little too late for that uh, if you don't uh, want to see any data mine stuff. So before we hop into this, uh, I'm just going to go into the actual talent tree here. And we'll talk about the talents uh, very briefly. So Paladin has a very easy one, in my opinion. Um, and I think that you're pretty much going, if you're, you're going to want to go, like, all the way down the tree to Holy Shock. Um, assuming you are a healing Paladin, obviously. Now, you know, maybe in particular circumstances, like, let's say that you, your 10-man does not have kings or something, right? So can we fit kings in here? Let's see... We probably can if we do this. So yeah, you could do something like, uh, I, don't, I don't know if these wouldn't be correct. I'm just trying to see if we can get to kings. So you could do something like this if your raid really needed kings, right? Definitely a viable uh, alternative. Um, but you're probably not wanna, not going to want to go much deeper than that. Um, you're not really going to want to take Sanctuary, I doubt, unless there's a very specific application for it in the raid. And my guess on that is going to be that there's not going to be. Um, Sanctuary is great for doing things like, you know, solo farming and, and stuff of that sort, but not really super great uh, as a blessing. You're going to want to have on people all the time in like a 10-man or something like that, right? So again, if you really need kings or something, you could go this build, and because really what you need is an illumination. We'll go through this in a second, but you're pretty much mostly going to be going, uh, going through the holy thing, and I'll just put the points in over here. So you take the intellect and you take this. These are pretty much no-brainers. This is no-brainer because there's nothing else you're really going to take in that slot, right? Same thing with healing light here. Then this is our bread and butter. Um, this is what basically makes Paladin work and makes it such a mana battery, uh, getting uh, mana back from crits. And as you'll see, this is probably going to get super enhanced. Uh -huh in this tier, depending on which rune we actually get. And uh, that's why this is going to be one that you're probably not going to skip at all if you're healing. I just can't see skipping this. Yeah, <laughs> it's just too good, right? And then you'll take uh, Divine Favor, which is sort of like the um, the priest's other ability, but it doesn't make the, the ability free. It just gives 100% critical chance, which technically makes it free because of Illumination, so it, it, it is essentially free there, but we put two points in Blessing of Wisdom, and then uh, you can kind of do whatever you want with these points. You can put, like, two points in here. You can put one point. Most people probably put one point in here, one point in here, 
And the idea is that like if you ever need consecration for doing solo stuff, you know, you have it. Um, if you're doing like if you really care about PvP, maybe you put two points in here instead. Right, it doesn't really matter too much. I probably like at least one point in here, because um, I'll probably be judging stuff in the raid. But I'm just gonna put two points in for now, because I'm probably not gonna need this. And then you put the five points in Holy Power, and you take Holy Shock. Now, why do you go all the way down to Holy Shock? Well, it's basically just because the alternative options you have of not taking Holy Shock here, not really the best, right? You can't really get to anything super useful with six points. In either of these trees and uh, holy shock is actually in my opinion a lot better than people think i mean it like just having an instant heal is good there's pretty much no way around that um especially it can potentially crit right so that's always good as well um and yeah you just can't really argue with an instant and these five points here are kind of huge for the paladin due to how illumination works the class works in general and crit when, when people think of paladin they think of crit and they think of illumination, right? And that's obvious, and it <clears throat> should be what they think about. But um, crit also helps just with throughput, right? Because one of the places that Paladin struggles, and one of the areas that definitely struggled uh, in the last raid in BFD, is actual like raw throughput and being able to sustain like a high amount of throughput. Um, if Paladin is like your second healer in BFD, if it was your second healer, it was like super chill actually right it was pretty great because you beacon the tank you spot heal anybody in the raid with flash of light uh you can literally spam it and pretty much never go oom especially if you're using mana pots and uh you know you're having a pretty solid time the part that it kind of gets a little bit sketchy is if uh, you have to basically be like the primary healing force during the raid right because there's going to be some instances where flashlight just doesn't cut it, right? You can't really keep up with some of the damage uh, just spamming flash of light at this particular uh, gear bracket, right? This particular band or phase or whatever you want to call it. So you'd have to resort to using holy light. And holy light is vastly, uh, as we went over in the Paladin video, it's just like actually less mana efficient. Now, keep in mind that is at base, right? So because holy light does take longer to cast, it actually does scale better with plus healing. Holy Light has a coefficient of uh, 0.84, I believe, and I think Flash of Light is something like 0.44. So as we start to add more healing, um, more plus healing rather, the gap between the like efficiency of the abilities kind of narrows a little bit, right? But we're not gonna have that much plus healing available to us uh, at level 40 still. So given the context, that we're talking about in here. Uh, Flash of Light still by far like the most mana efficient spell, right? And um, when you have to go outside of using Flash of Light to using Holy Light to increase your throughput, your mana really starts to suffer and that's where you kind of have problems with Paladins going oom um and stuff like that, right? So, um, yeah, as long as you kind of keep things into... Uh, you know, keep keep using Flash of Light for the most part, you're pretty much going to be fine. And um, that's that is kind of like the weakness of them, I feel like, in BFD, right? Is that they can only really shine in that high throughput, high HPS setting for very short amounts of time. Uh, I think a great example would be like Kelris is a perfect thing, right? You can be Flash of Lighting the entire fight, and then maybe you have to cast some Clutch Holy Lights to uh, recover people that are getting chunked by the Mind Blast, you're like pre-casting it a bit, but you can only afford to do that so much, and um, you know, as long as you don't need to keep going to that well, you're actually fine, but if you do, you'll go oom, um. so <laughs> that's basically how that works. Um, but yeah, that's basically the talent, and uh, the crit is going to give us, the, the whole point of that spiel, I guess, is that the crit is going to allow our more efficient uh, lower mana costing heal to be able to actually do more healing, right? Which is really important because the, the class does need throughput. So yeah, there's that. And we're going to touch on the abilities uh, really quick. Now, um, there's not a ton here that's like different from before, right? So you have Divine Intervention, 
right? This is something you wouldn't have at 25. Uh, we all know what that is, but that's not really going to be integral to healing, just kind of like white protection or whatever, right? And then we have seal of light. So this is probably going to be judged because there's going to be no um, no debuff cap from what I understand, right? I don't think there was even in this phase, but we didn't have either of these. Wisdom, this is another thing you can judge. Um, and, uh, you know, you're going to want to have this up. And you, interestingly enough, like, more paladins are probably going to be using these two than, you know, normal on the alliance side, I would say, because it's probably something where in, in a level 60 setting, I believe only one paladin used these before, right? Or it was like one paladin for each or whatever. Or in some cases, you may not even use light, uh, depending on the, the situation, right? So... You know, only a couple paladins in your raid were actually actively using these, but now since it's going to be ten man, you are probably going to be like the one holy paladin in your raid, and you're probably going to be using wisdom, is uh, is what I imagine for the uh, for the most part. But we'll have to see uh, how people's mana is and how it feels and stuff like that. But I can pretty much pretty much guarantee it's probably going to be wisdom. Uh, you get more auras, which is nice. These are just like. Obviously, super situational, right? Nothing really too much to talk about there. And then Blessing of Light is uh, is kind of nice. Now, Blessing of Light is going to be kind of like a luxury. If you're like the only paladin, you know, you're not going to be uh, buffing light most likely. Um, I think there's an argument that could be made to buffing it on the tanks. To be honest, like, it's probably one of the best things to buff on the tanks, uh, assuming... If your tank like really needs the uh, additional stamina from kings, then and you don't have a hunter, then you know I can see putting kings on them. But if they don't really need the extra health, I mean they should have. You should have a hunter anyway, realistically. But if you didn't and they don't really need the extra health, this is actually probably the better choice. Um, but. Good luck telling a tank that, right? Like they're just gonna be like, "Oh, you're you're crazy for not giving me extra max health, right?" Um, but it shouldn't really be an issue because they should have hunter kings. So yeah, hopefully you, there's multiple paladins in the raid. Probably like at least one ret, one holy, maybe even a tank. And the more blessings you have, the the more useful this is because you can fit it on more classes. And like it's really good. I mean, even at like rank one here, as you can see. Um, 60 on your flash of light is nothing to scoff at and then 210 on holy light which is just crazy um and keep in mind in bfd paladins were pretty decent in terms of damage and they were really good tanks right so if you had one dps paladin uh one tank paladin and then um one holy paladin you can definitely afford to probably have this up on on everybody right and that's huge to be honest, it's really a, a huge difference, and uh, it'll it'll make choosing what heal to cast kind of like way more interesting, right? Because now you can actually do stuff like down rank more holy lights and stuff like that. Because two hundred and ten is nothing to scoff at. Um, so definitely be looking out for this, and make sure if you're you are running multiple paladins on alliance side that you are taking advantage of this, right? Just don't be that person who doesn't train this, right? <laughs> Because, like, you normally wouldn't train it at this level, right? But it's definitely, definitely something to take advantage of. It's going to be huge. <clears throat> the only other things I think I wanted to talk about here was um, the ranks of the abilities here. So this is going to be, like, our new max rank when we need it. And it's quite substantial, as you can see, but it does cost uh, quite a bit of mana. And then our max rank flash of light is this. Very cheap, uh, very solid heal still. Now, the one concern I have with uh, with these two ranks is, like, this one's pretty good, right? We're pretty close to 40, but something you always have to look out for when we're getting these new phases is, you know, how close to, like, the level bracket are the normal spells, basically, right? Because the uh, runes always scale per level. And I think that's one of the big issues they've had with balancing the runes. I mentioned this in another video, but the, the runes... Not only are they just the in, in a lot of cases there's like a triple there's like a tri it's like a triangle of problems, right? And it's like on one corner of the triangle, the spell that you're comparing against the old spell is just better, right? And then in another corner, 
it's just tuned slightly better, right? And then in the third corner, there's the fact that not only is the new spell tuned slightly better, but the old spell isn't adjusted at all, so it may not even actually be like a level 40 spell. So it's not, it's not even like it's being brought to level 40 and being scaled at level 40. You may be getting it at just whatever level you got it, right, basically. Um, and, you know, you're not going to get the next rank until maybe beyond 40. So that's basically the case with Flash of Light here. And this is something that we kind of got played with in the last... Um, here as well with flashlight being 20 and not 24 right because just the in terms of like how much the game is expecting this heal to do right it's not necessarily expecting um it to be like maybe the primary heal on level 40 players at this point right because there's probably another one at like level 42 or something like that so we're kind of like just out of grasp of getting the next uh flash of light again and that feels kind of bad because our Flash of Light is like the bread and butter of Pal and Healing, basically, right? It's like the thing you want to be casting all the time, generally speaking. So that is a little bit rough, and it obviously definitely doesn't uh, abate my throughput concerns at all, because like I said, that was already a problem going into this, right? And uh, so yeah, not the best feeling there, but at least we do have uh, a nice thick max rank. Probably won't be using this a ton, though probably be using either uh, this one or maybe even uh, rank 4 Holy Light, to be honest, potentially. But you'll definitely be using max rank uh, Flash Light because, yeah, there's just no point to using the, uh, the rank 2, essentially. So, with that being said, we've pretty much covered all of the, the normal stuff, and we can get into the juice. So we're going to go through these one at a time. Uh, we're not going to do the non-healing ones, obviously, right? So we're only going to do the healing ones. And uh, we're going to do a video like this for each class. So if Paladin isn't your class, just sit tight. And uh, yeah, we'll get right into things. So the first one is not really a uh, healing uh, rune at all. But, um, you know, 17%... Uh, Spell hit is nothing to scoff at, so <laughs> there may be some potential applications here, but I think what you're really going to be using is this sheath of light thing. Now, this is like confusing initially a little bit because it says dealing damage with your melee weapon increases your spell power by an amount equal to 30% of your attack power for one minute. Um, in addition, your critical healing spells heal the target for 60% of the amount healed over 12 seconds. Now, I'm pretty sure these are just two separate non-interactive effects. So I don't think you actually have to do the melee damage. Um, I think it's just like when this ability is active. Uh, or like... Or maybe what it is, is like when you deal damage... Then... With like a melee weapon. Then you get the effect for one minute. And part of that effect is the critical healing. Regardless, um, I think this is probably going to be the one that you're going to choose for healing. And... Um, we saw something about this kind of like before, if you noticed, uh, when we were going over Pallet and stuff, like way, way back. I was actually concerned initially when I saw the original Pallet level 25 leaks because it said something about Flash of Light, and it had a Flash of Light a component in the um, in the data mine stuff that was actually a heal over time. And I was like, shit, did they change this to heal over time? Like, we might be screwed, right? Because that would be really bad. But it's fine if we're just getting it as an additional um, additional component, right? Which is what it is here. So we kind of already saw this already. And this is just a great example of how sometimes the data mine stuff, like we saw that last tier, remember, wasn't in last tier. So hopefully it'll be in this tier, but maybe not. And uh, in terms of how I think it'll be, uh, well, it's only on crits. Right, so that is like a bit of a limitation, but I mean, you can't really argue with 60% of the amount healed over 12 seconds. Now, granted, um, if you do this with Flash of Light, it's going to be a very weak hot, right? Because we can pop back over here and see that uh, Flash of Light is... Where is it? It's like level 34, right? Okay. 153 to 171. Right, and then, you know, it's a 44 coefficient, 0.44 coefficient. 
you're going to have a little bit of plus healing. You're probably coming out of BFD with, like, you know, at least, like, 50 healing for most people, right? So 175 to 200-ish around there on this ability. And then you're going to get 60% of that, right? Uh, but the problem is, is, like, the hot is over 12 seconds. Now... Personally, I think it would be obviously just way better if the hot was over a shorter amount of time. But um, <laughs> this is what we got, right? So the healing per tick is going to be very weak here because we're basically like half of 200, a little bit more than half, and then we're dividing that by 10, right? So we're talking about potentially some single-digit healing numbers on the, uh, on the ticks. But in reality, there's just not nothing better here, it seems like, unless you're going to need this for some type of spell hit or something like that, you know? Um, or, like, you really want it for your judgment range uh, when you're judging wisdom or something like that. So, it, it, like, you know, you could use this, but I'm thinking this is probably still going to be the default. And, um, yeah, I'll have to see if this costs mana, if it's like an active ability or something like that. If it's something you really have to activate, and it costs like any, even a reasonable amount of mana, at that point I'm concerned for it being used, because uh, I don't think it's going to be worth it in most cases. What I'm also curious about is if this applies to the beacon, right? Uh, if the crit on the beacon heal just counts as normal crit, or if it just replicates the actual number, whatever that is, and it doesn't get tagged as a crit. Because if the beacon heal gets tagged as a crit, then obviously this is twice as effective. Um, and it's kind of nice because the hot is going to be always on the person that is going to be taking damage, which is the tank, right? So that is good. It's just that the actual amount of healing is not uh, not super impressive. And, uh, you know, the, the other thing you have with these hots that, that don't do a lot per tick is they tend to just get sniped really bad, right? Now, in 10-man content not the end of the world, right? Because you have more control, like I always say. Uh, you can, you know, tell your, your partner I'm healing the tank or whatever, right? Or, like, maybe, you know, don't, like, let me do the spot healing or whatever. If you're healing with, like, a druid, let's say, just be like, you know, only kick in when we need the real big AoE healing. And if you do something like that, you're going to be getting to use a lot more of these little hots, right? Because, obviously, nobody else is going to be there to snipe them. So in this, like, kind of, like, solo heal or two heal, but in reality it's really just a main healer with an off heal type setting, uh, this stuff is more effective. And I think it could be effective as well at level 60 and in the higher levels, uh, especially because all this stuff is going to scale a bit harder, right? But I think that as long as the content in the game remains easy, stuff like this is going to kind of be overshadowed a little bit. Right, especially when we get into level 60 content, because, um, like I said, right now you're able to use it better because you can have more communication with your healing partner. That's not going to be the case at 60, and if the raids are not hard enough to justify the, um, to like justify, uh, justify would be the wrong word, but if, if the raids aren't hard enough at 60 to really push healers uh, in their mana, then other classes are just going to easily have the mana to like snipe this, right? They're not, it's not like they're trying to snipe it, but that's just what's going to happen. Where something like this would really shine, I think, is like once the scaling starts to kick in at 60, and then you're on a fight that's actually really difficult, right? So, um, remind this reminds me of like in classic uh, OG 2019, the um. The one fight in MC, the not any, not that any of the fights were hard, right? But the one fight that was a little bit more challenging than the rest sometimes was like Major Domo. That one tended to last uh, a bit longer, and sometimes, depending on the Novas that the ads did, would have quite a bit of uh, AOE damage. And um, you know, I think for me, Renew was a, a pretty bad spell for most of that raid. But sometimes, what would happen is people would really just blow their load like early on that fight. And they'd have, like, no mana going into the end. And if I saved a bit of mana and tossed a bunch of renews out on, like, the, you know, 60%, 70% half health targets, like, you get a lot of plus, uh, you get a lot of healing from that. Um, and uh, renew was pretty efficient at that point because you had a lot of, like, plus healing, right, on the priest. 
So this is kind of like a similar situation where if you ever get into those fights where mana is actually going to be an issue and, uh, you know, other classes are struggling for mana and you still have mana, then you're really, really going to be benefiting from this hot component. It's going to be insanely strong, right? Um, and in some ways, I think that's really good for Paladin because what it means is, like, in those situations where, you know, things actually matter, Paladin is going to be a really good healer. Now, are we going to get many of those? Who knows? But if we don't, then it doesn't really matter anyway, right? Because you can use a Paladin, you can use a Priest, you can use a Shaman, you can use a Druid. If everything's easy, you can use anything. But if stuff's hard, then you do have stuff like this to fall back on. It's like really good runes, right? So yeah, uh, I think that's going to be... It's going to be good. It's just like, is it going to be good in this bracket right away? Um, probably not, but... It has the potential to be really good, right? So keep an eye on that one. Okay, so let's go to the next one, um, which is I, this is also a boot slot, I guess. Uh, so they both share boot slot. Each time you hit with your melee weapon, gain five percent of your maximum mana for three seconds for fifteen seconds. But the amount healed by your flash of light, to holy light, and holy shock spells is reduced by fifty percent during this mana regeneration. So this is, I think, supposed to be like a tank rune or something like that. Uh, but you could also take it on healer. Right, um, and you could take this if you think for whatever reason, like you're really sure you're going oom on a fight, right? And you could be like, you, you could dump your mana and then go into this state where you're milling the boss, you're keeping this regeneration proc up, and then you just wait for it to fade and you, uh, you go back to casting your normal heals. And keep in mind that uh, when people see, like, a downside, and this is pretty much in any game, right? I feel like they tend to overreact a little bit to downsides. So it says 50%, um, you know, reduced value on Holy Light, Holy Shock, Flash of Light, etc. And people see that, and they're like, okay, so don't heal at all during this effect, right? And obviously, that's probably, like, the ideal way to handle it in most cases. But it the good thing is, is it doesn't prevent you from healing, right, which would be kind of bad or maybe a little bit sus. You can still heal, and as you can see, going back to our uh, our actual heals here, the big one, this is healing quite a lot, right? Now, on a tank, this may not be that much at level 40. I mean, it is still going to be substantial, but, like, may not be that, that much, right? But on a normal DPS or something like that, something you're going to spot heal for, this is probably still going to be a decent chunk of their life. You know what I mean? So, I guess what I'm saying is, if you do take this rune, right, and you're in that phase of, sorry, this one, I believe. No, this one, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it's this. Yeah, it is this. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, if you take this, and you're in that regeneration phase, you can definitely still toss out, like, a sizable heal on somebody if they actually need it. You know what I mean? So it doesn't preclude you from doing that at all. It's just, like, less efficient for you to do it. So I like that. I like that you can still... You still have the option, if needed, to do it, right? It's always good to have options, um, even, if, even if it may not be optimal, right? And what What is optimal is keeping somebody alive at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, I could definitely see this being used. But, um... Oh, these are separate. Okay, yeah, sorry. It's this and this that are the same. Okay, so yeah, you're probably, you probably are going to be taking this then regardless. Uh, depending on, obviously, what the mana cost and stuff like that is. And if it's, like, active all the time or not. So this is the first one for the boot. And this is going to be, I believe, competing with this. Um, which is why I don't think you're going to be taking this one much. And we'll get into this one right now. So, Sacred Shield, uh... Each time the target takes damage, they gain Sacred Shield, absorbing 500 damage, increasing the Paladin's chance to critically hit with Flashlight by 50%, uh, which is insane for up to uh, for up to six seconds. In addition, your Flashlight heals uh, heals targets with Sacred Shield for an additional 100% over 12 seconds. Um, they cannot gain this effect more than or more than once every six seconds, the last 30 seconds, the spell cannot be on more than one target at a time. So this seems like some sort of thing you'll cast on somebody, presumably probably a tank, right? And then, um, you know, they're gaining a shield when they get hit, 
right? And then I think that this flashlight 50% buff just stays up the entire time. Like, I don't think it actually gets consumed based on how this is awarded. Um... For, oh, it says for up to six seconds. So maybe it depends on the chance to. Hmm. Cause your flash of light to heal the target with sacred shield for an additional hundred percent. So yeah, it, it's kind of unclear. Uh, if it's just fifty percent increased crit for flash of light on that target for the entire six second duration, I mean that's going to be insane, especially because it says. They cannot gain this effect more than once every six seconds and it lasts 30 seconds and it can't be placed on somebody else. So what this says to me is you, since they have all these kind of like um, modifiers here, right, on it, um, is that you're going to be able to basically recast this on a single target pretty much like permanently, right? And the only thing is that they're not, t they're not getting a 500 damage shield every time they get hit. Um, I think the shield can only occur once every six seconds. But it's unclear to me if, you know, the flashlight multiplier is there. I think the flashlight, it probably gets consumed if I had to imagine. So I think you get the 500 damage shield. And I would imagine uh, you, know, you get one flash of light with 50% uh, crit. And then that flash of light uh, also has a 100% hot component, right? So there's a lot going on with this rune. And uh, it's obviously just insane, right? I don't know that there's... Uh, Anything more to say about it? I mean, it's going to depend on the mana, of course. We have to look at the mana and see. But if the mana on this is, like, even reasonable, it's just completely completely cracked, right? Um, like, preventative damage with shields is by far one of the best things you can do in this game uh, because it's so versatile and so flexible. You know, you can just be casting this all along or you can help to basically use it to help uh, inflate the tank's max health at a given time. You know, like for an Akumai stack or something like that. So this is just super powerful. I mean, there's nothing else to say about this. It's just insane. And uh, another hot component <laughs> to flash a light. So just these two abilities alone looking insane, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Uh, yeah. So... This is going to be the next one. Engrave Helm. Uh, well, we can we can look at the the two that are bracers, I guess. Um, this could be interesting for like help out and execute, I guess. And if you don't have another bracer slot, um, this is also potentially interesting. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be many undead and demons in the raid, so. But these are just going to be like damaging things, obviously. It's so not super interested in, in going too deep into those. Um, if we don't get another bracer slot, though, you're obviously going to be taking one of them, right? So, and it kind of just depends, I guess, like on how much mana they cost, whether you're going to be using them a lot or not, right? And then this is the one that I that I was talking about when I was referencing the uh, the talents earlier, because this is insane. Increases your critical strike chance with holy spells by eighteen percent. That is ridiculous because you have 18% plus 5% plus, I believe, 5% base crit, right? So we're at 28%. Then you have crit from your intellect, which we're going to have even more of in this raid, and is multiplied by things like kings and this talent right here. You're probably at least getting, like, I think it's, like, 50-some. You can probably at least get, like, 200-some intellect, I think, easily. Right, so that's like, it's like 50, I think, points for one crit for a Paladin, so you're probably at least getting another 5 from that. So that's like 33, right? And then um, the last buff gave uh, crit, so you're probably going to get some crit from the new buff as well, I would assume. So we're, we're like encroaching on 40% chance to crit, and that's like if, depending on the gear, they may actually have some spell crit on gear and stuff like that, so... It may be realistic to get close to 40% uh, spell cure, which is, I mean, that's more than you'd have, like, in, in Endgame in uh, 2019 Classic, right? Until you, uh, like, uh, at least until you got to, like, the very end game, maybe when you were fully world buffed, 
right? But this is doing just like a ton of work, especially combined with the 5% crit talent here. And that's going to make your uh, mana super amazing. It's going to make illumination pop off, obviously. It's going to help with the throughput, like I was saying. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's just absolutely crazy. So it's looking good to be a paladin. And I think that's basically... Yeah, I think that's basically it, right? Um, this is the other one. Okay, so uh, your Holy Light spells reduce the cast time of your next Holy Light by 0.5 seconds. Um, I don't know if this... It, it doesn't say if it stacks. I mean, if it doesn't, then I guess it's just two-second Holy Lights. But uh, if it does, you're going to have some instant Holy Lights in there. The thing is, I just think that uh, this can't compare to the Crit Strike, right? The only time you would use this is like this is going to be like your parsing tool, your throughput tool, right? If you need to crank up your throughput, this is going to be the spell you use, but it's not going to be like a mana efficient spell or like a a really good spell that you want to go to, right? It's um you you're pretty much going to want to stick with a crit, I believe. Uh if you want actually longevity and and mana and stuff like that if the fights are even remotely challenging. But, I mean, if, you know, we just blow through everything, I could totally see a bunch of paladins using this, right? Because there's no way to unlock higher HPS than to go with Holy Light right now, right? So this is just going to allow you to, to push that throughput even harder, basically. And uh, obviously that has its applications with parsing and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. And I think, uh, unlike normal, we've uh, managed to cover this in a fairly brief period of time. But uh, I guess it's relatively simple stuff. We kind of built on the base pretty well. So now it's just like adding stuff like that on top of it, new runes, uh, quick little talent adaptation. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm like really looking excited. Or, yeah, I'm looking excited. I'm really excited for Paladin. Uh, level 40 to be honest. I know we didn't cover Paladin too much this time, and that's going to really change a lot at level 40 because this stuff just looks absolutely crazy. Uh, and I think I'm still leveling the Priest first, but the Paladin may be like second or third. And <laughs> once we get him leveled, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Uh, I could definitely see like solo healing the raid and stuff like that. Assuming the... Uh, I think that the main question is just going to be, can we muster up the actual HPS? Do we have the throughput? And if the answer to that is yes, then it's going to be super easy to, to soul heal raid and stuff like that. The only thing I could see blocking us, again, is just if we don't have that raw throughput, we may need another partner. But, um, you know, I think, I think now it's going to be, see, in BFD it was like the Paladin was sort of like the consistent off healer but it kind of sucked because they couldn't really do any damage right so if you have priest and druid in bfd the druid's the off healer but it does a ton of damage in um in a bfd with a paladin priest the paladin is probably still going to want to be the or sorry the priest is probably still going to want to be the primary healer um i i primary healed on my paladin in quite a few runs but the you know, the groups are pretty decent and stuff like that. If tons of people are taking a lot of damage, the priest is really still going to need to step up to the plate, right? Whereas at least now, I think, in Nomer, the Paladin probably has enough tools to pretty much be the primary healer, and he would just need a little bit of supplementation from a priest or a druid or something like that, right? So at least now, I think it can be kind of, like, flexible. And I think that tends to work better for the Paladin when they can be the primary healer, because they don't really have great damage, right? I think the Priest and the Druid, from what we've seen, uh, have better damage. So uh, it just tends to work better if the Paladin's the one primarily casting all the big heals and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be really strong. It's going to be a really good time for Alliance. And uh, if you're thinking about making a Paladin... Uh, definitely make one for level 40 because this is going to be pretty crazy. And I think it's only going to get better, honestly. Um, you know, as you get more plus healing and stuff like that. Because again, like the only real problem the Paladin has is the throughput. 
and you pretty much fix that by getting more plus healing and more crit, right? So, yeah, it's just going to get better from here, but I think even at this level, it's going to be really strong. So thank you guys so much for watching. Always appreciate the support. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys again. I'm just always humbled uh, that you guys like watching the content. So look, uh, be on the lookout for more because we're going to go through all the, the runes for every class and stuff like that and maybe do some gear breakdowns and stuff. So keep an eye out. See you guys later.